you don't you don't know what it is to have to preach in 2016. Y'all heard about the bats in the belfry, didn't you? They tried everything to get rid of them and couldn't get rid of them. Some guy suggested you baptize them. And they ain't been back. told you when you testify read your Bible give me something out of your Bible I got two of you did it did y'all rest of you forget it I feel sorry for me I, I feel sorry because I got to preach this and man don't nobody want this but my job is to preach it Amen. so I will do that and don't you get mad at me I got three scriptures I want to read. One of them's in the book of Leviticus, one of them's in the book of Galatians, and one of them's in the book of Revelation. So let's just take them as we come to them. Leviticus chapter 19. Leviticus chapter 19. Man, it done made you mad, and we ain't got started. <laughs> you, you wait, wait, till, wait till I get finished. If I didn't get you, I'll get you right here. Look at verse 28. Leviticus 19, verse 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. You don't make marks upon you. My uh, question tonight is, are you marked? If I was to ask you, what did Johnny the Baptist and Barry Goldwater have in common? <laughs> Would you know? Some of you may. I'll tell you. They both had tattoos. And they both were ashamed of. Look at that verse. Don't print any marks. Don't you feel sorry for me have to preach this stuff? I mean, you know, used to be that didn't bother you. The only people there with marks was sailors and prostitutes. Now you got them, some of the preacher's daughters. Thank God, not mine. Are you marked? Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Verse number 17. Galatians 6, 17. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Wonder what that was. You reckon he had a cross tattooed on his? <laughs> Do you think it may have been where he'd been beaten? You think it may have been where he had marks all over his body, where they had beat him with rods and stoned him? Yeah, amen. My question is, are you marked? And if you're marked, how are you marked? One more and, and we'll, we'll preach. In the book of Revelation, chapter number 13. Revelation, chapter number 13. Look at verse 16. This is speaking of the Antichrist. And it says there, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, 
that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. He causes people to be marked. Uh, I think, just might well say it, preacher, I think Satan's behind the tattoo craze that's going on today. And you might be like Johnny the Baptist and Barry Goldwater. You might be have one be embarrassed about it, covered up. Yeah. I hope so. Thank God I'm 70 years old, ain't got none yet. Probably not going to get one yeah. as far as going to the tattoo parlor. But I want to preach to you. I want to ask you, have you been marked? And if you've been marked, uh, how? Amen, amen, amen. Probably ought to just go ahead and close, hadn't I? (laughs) Our Heavenly Father, thank you today for this privilege that we have to pray. And God, I just ask you that we could learn from your word. That's what you gave it to us for. Father, you want us to study it. You want us to be like the Bereans and know what it says and why it says it. And Lord, we pray that we'd be able to Trust in it. And Lord, if we get marks, may they be the marks where we've stood for the Lord Jesus. Pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, as long as I can remember, and maybe you can remember further back, but as long as I can remember, people have talked to me about this infamous uh, mark of the beast. When I was a boy, they said the social security number was going to be the mark of the beast. Y'all remember that? What if I'd tell you if you lived in a if you lived in a rich community, you'd get you one two before that was about seven foot long and two blocks of wood, and you'd nail those two blocks of wood on that two before, and you'd use them as a prop in the middle of your clothesline. But since we as coal miners and didn't couldn't afford to go to the lumber company, what we'd do just cut a stick down and had a fork in it. <laughs> What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about the, the things, as long as I can remember, people, have, people have, have talked about there's a day coming when you can't buy or sell unless you got the mark of the beast. And uh, uh, I understand uh, it to be a, a social security number that they use now for your... A serial number in in the army. They didn't do that when I was in the army. Not no longer than than what fifty years, forty eight years since I got out of the army. Uh, we had a regular serial number because they said, no, we're not going to use the social security number because FDR promised us that social security would never be used to identify you. And when the barcodes came out, I mean, I heard preachers talking about, well, uh, that's the mark of the beast right there. Do you know that Kroger's knows more about you than you know about yourself? Yeah. Whenever you use that check card, whenever you use, scan their little scan, do you know they know who's shopping, when they're shopping? Yeah. Yeah. You know they know what you eat? Because when you scan that little jar of peanut butter or that pizza or whatever that is you're putting across there, they've got all of that. And uh, they've got technology right now to to track you wherever you go. Somebody told me, well, if the the Antichrist gets after me, I'm just going to go in the woods. Well, hey, they can track you in the woods today. Amen. Uh, They... uh, I'm convinced that when he sets up his kingdom that he will have the ability to track everybody in the world. And the folks who do not have that mark of the beast in that cashless society, the folks that don't, I am convinced that they'll never be able to survive. You'll either take it or die. Are you marked? Now, when the Jews sent the priest and the Levites, uh, they said, Art thou the Christ? And, and he said, No. And he said, Well, are you Elias or, or uh, that prophet? Matthew eleven fourteen 14 said, If you'll receive it, uh, Elijah has come. 
and uh, many people are already marked by by the the beast before the tribulation ever gets here. Yeah. So I, what I'm saying is that you can be be marked and not be marked. Mm-hmm. You can be marked and not have the mark. Yeah. Uh, just like John the Baptist could be Elijah and not be Elijah. Yeah. Right. Uh, when God made Adam, He gave him dominion over the beasts of the field and made uh, made him in the image of God and and he gave him the ability to rule over the fowl and the creatures the creeping things uh, over every living thing that moved in the earth he made him to have dominion over it then up comes this snake he is supposed to have dominion over that serpent he is supposed to tell that serpent what to do not have the serpent tell him what to do. Yeah, yeah. Amen. But you know, the book said he is more subtle than any of the other beasts of the field. Instead of Adam communion in his dominion, he actually listened to a beast. Yeah. Right. And sin is a mark of that beast. You understand what I'm saying? We're sinners today because he listened to a beast a long time ago. We're looking for that prophetic mark. Hey, they're already marked in our society today. When Adam made of the tree, he exchanged his clothing of glory for the nakedness and shame of the serpent. And I submit that rather than bearing the similitude of God, that Adam from then on bore the similitude of God but was marred and marked by the nature of a beast. That's why they do what they've done, Tim. They do that because they're marked. Amen. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you'll do. Both Jude and Peter talk about uh, uh, the natural man uh, having the state of being like a brute beast. Lucifer fell from heaven. And uh, his fall, uh, uh, the position over the angels of God, uh, and at some future date, he'll no doubt set up his one world global system. Yeah. Everybody wants to know about it. Let me, let me tell you what, now this is what I personally believe. I don't preach it, this is what I believe. Okay, I'm getting ready to preach it. Are you ready? <laughs> I, I believe that the international bankers control every government in the world. Yeah, amen. And I believe they'll use the Roman Catholic Church yeah to get their self set up in a one world government and then they'll destroy the Roman Catholic Church. That's what I believe. Yeah. But globalism's the thing. Yeah. And there is not one person running for president that isn't a globalist. Not Amen. one of them. Right. Even the best of them is a bride. Amen. Every one of them wants to be an international community. Yeah. God set up a national community. Yeah. Now, when Lucifer fell... He, he, uh, he said the reason for his fall was he said, I, I will. I will ascend into heaven. I will be like the Most High. I will in my heart. I like what Jesus said in Gethsemane. He said, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. 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 There, is a, there is a mark of godliness as well as a mark of ungodliness. Amen. Adam was told to exercise dominion, but he didn't do it. Uh, and and uh, uh, so whenever he started his with that mark of ungodliness, it's dog eat dog. Everybody live for himself. People will step on you. Amen. They will step on you just to get ahead. Just to get promoted on a job, they'll step on you. I had a guy called me today that used to work for me at Valley Camp. Called me today. It had been, what, 40 years since I'd heard from him? When, when we got laid off in 85. Was that 30 years ago? And he'd been out of the will of God for 30 years. And he got in the will of God, and I'm assuming the first guy he called was me. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. When he worked with me, he hated me. Wonder why... Do you see what I'm saying? Wonder why whenever he gets rid of the mark and starts the other mark, he wants to straight. Hey, man, we want to live godly and do the things that are right in God's sight. Now, Jesus was presented with the presidency. 
Jesus was told, if you'll bow down to me, if you'll accept my mark on your life, not, not, the, not the mark of God, but you'll accept my, my mark on your life, he said, I'll give you every kingdom in the world, every one of them. And here we are calling it the mic and dream. And we're around here worried about a uh, uh, coming mark uh, while God is relegated a, a lower status uh, and we engage in trying to get the kingdom to this world to do what we want them to. Yeah, amen. Paul said to the uh, Philippians, uh, uh, with tears, people who do so are the enemies of the cross and whose God is their belly. Yeah. The, the, the harlot church of Revelation actually rides on the back of that beast. Uh, yeah. And how about it? Have you been riding on it too? Have you set your affection on things on earth and not on things in heaven? Are you, are you like Joel Osteen and think, well, God ought to get, make me a millionaire? Yeah. Well, listen, Jesus was a millionaire and he gave it up to yeah. serve the Lord. Yeah. I mean, how come we want to have all the wealth of the world in heaven too? Yeah. Where did he, well, I got to have a place to live. Oh, you do, do you? Mm -hmm. I remember when they told him that. He said, foxes have got holes, uh, uh, birds have got nests, but I don't have no place to lay my head. And you think you're better than him, do you? You think you're supposed to have gold plumbing and live in a mansion, do you? Yeah. Amen. I think you're marked is what I'm saying. Yeah. Amen. We need to look at some people in the Bible I believe had the mark. One of them I think was Saul. King of Israel, uh, uh, when introduced uh, uh, to him, he's looking for his father's asses. Hallelujah. Amen. Those elusive asses, he couldn't find them. Yeah. He was looking for them. He was looking for beasts. Uh, he looked on Mount Ephraim and he looked uh, in the land of Shalish and Shalom uh, and he couldn't catch up with them. There's always gone just one wrench out of his reach. Yeah. John D. Rockefeller was the richest man in the world. They asked him how much is enough and he said, if I just had a little bit more. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. Whenever you get a savings account going, you know, man, if I just had $100 in there, I, I, I'd feel like I was wealthy. And you get $100 in there and you say, well, if I just had 500 man, what if I could get 1000 Can you imagine me? Can you imagine me with a passbook savings that's got $10,000 in it? When I get that, you know what I want? Why well, wasn't that... <laughs> I wasn't that marked. I just wanted 11. <laughs> Amen. Trying to find the asses. Boy, that's a good description. Yeah, I mean, we're looking for them. We think they'll make us happy. Yeah. If I just had a new car, I'd be happy. If I just had a new boat, I'd be happy. Yeah. If I just had a new house, I'd be happy. If I just had a new husband, I'd be happy. Yeah. If I just had a new wife, I'd be happy. Am I telling it right? Yeah, amen. amen. Yeah, two Wilsons goes to Tudors, and you got to make sure that they're brothers. <laughs> if I just had, if I just had some different children, or if I just went to a different school, or if I just had a different job, I'd be happy if I had a different church. I'd be happy if we get rid of the preacher. Just and, and, and it's always just reach out out of your reach. Amen. He was marked by that beast. Somebody else found them. He never did find them. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I think about David. David went looking for a beast, but he went looking for the, a, a different reason. Amen. Those beasts, uh, uh, that bear and that lion, they came in my flock and they got some of my sheep and I'm going to get them back. Yeah. And he didn't want to catch the beast so he could use it for his advantage, but he wanted to catch him so he'd get rid of him. Amen. He slew the beast while Saul pursued the beast. Yeah. That's the difference in marks. Uh, 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 what is termed the old man in the Christian life? The old man uh, uh, in the Christian life. What we need to do with him is slay him. Yeah. He needs to be crucified. He needs to mortify the deeds that are in your body. And our flesh needs to be subjected to the Spirit of God. 
If we do not keep our body under subjection, we'll end up chasing something. Was it the Ecclesiastes writer said we've got a handful of wind. When we when we re- when we rich and got it, it wasn't nothing. Yeah. Now, here's a real example of a man that was marked. I think his name was uh, uh, Belshazzar. If you read in the book of Daniel, uh, uh, you'll read about a man named Nebuchadnezzar. I said Belshazzar, but Nebuchadnezzar is the one uh, I, I want to talk about. He said, I've arrived. Yeah. Look what I've done, people. This is my Babylon which I built. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I am just as happy by my power and by my might and to my honor. Uh, while he was talking, a voice from heaven said, Cut him down. What you need is to go out in the field and eat with the beasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you need to do is eat grass. Yeah. Now, I'm not trying to be mean, but wonder why the, wonder why the CEOs of these big companies and, and these Hollywood producers got that millions of dollars, but they eat grass. They can't stand to eat a meal. Yeah, yeah. Am I telling it right? Yeah. I mean, they got to have that lettuce diet. Uh, uh, they can't stand it. He, he, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had to learn that God is God uh, and to follow the trail of the beast will make you out there eating grass before it's over with. I'm preaching about are you marked? Uh, Paul said, uh, uh, having food and raiment, therewith be content. I dare say ain't nobody here to be content with it, not even me. Amen. Amen. We say, I got to have a home. (laughs) We say, I'm going to travel over the country, but I got to have a bus. (laughs) How am I doing? Jesus said, if you put your hand to the plow and look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. I think we got a lot of evangelists running over this country, Ronnie. It ain't fit to preach. They're out there trying to make money and yeah. ma- build a name for themselves yeah. instead of trying to get... Thank God for missionaries that goes clear across the water over in Spain and Africa and over in uh, uh, Palau and over in the Philippines. I pray every day, I pray that people will be in heaven because somebody uh, was willing to leave their home and comfort and go tell somebody around the world that Jesus said. Yeah. You plow a crooked row if you're looking back. Yeah, amen. amen. Your only desire is to advance your cause and you. And, and uh, uh, it, <laughs> I was pantomiming. <laughs> Let me do it again. Still standing there. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about, preacher? You ought to read your Bible. <laughs> we confuse gain with godliness. Amen. We think that it costs, we've got something big, got a lot of money, got a lot of people. We think that that's godly. And I'm telling you that godliness uh, with contentment is great gain. But whenever we get it, uh, we're getting marked. We're getting marked before the mark ever gets here. Some of them confuse pastoral leadership with Castro dictatorship. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Baptists are bad about it. I mean, they they think, you know, that that, that I got to have my way all the time. The preacher, stuff will grow in a crooked row. Yeah, I know a fella that sowed onions. (laughs) He went out there like that sower. (laughs) Every onion he had looked like that. (laughs) Well, I guess you could eat it, couldn't you? I mean, why does that? It, it makes it so much easier to harvest if you plow straight road. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
You, you can get that double shovel. You can get that whole, You can get that tractor. If you row straight, man, you can just run it for a mile after mile after mile after mile. It's so much easier to harvest if you're not running a crooked road. Yeah, amen. amen. I think the way to keep from being marked, and aren't you glad I didn't really slam them tattoos? I, I mean, you know, I, I hit them far enough, you know where I stand, didn't I? But, but, but aren't you glad I didn't really give you a prophetic message about that day when the mark of the beast is coming? <laughs> I did talk to you about the marks of the cross. Amen. But the way, I think the way to keep from being marked is like David. Hunt that beast down, grab him by the beard, and say, you ain't running my life no more. I'm going to live for God. Me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, and we're not going to tolerate you coming over here trying to steal my sheep. Let's bow for prayer. I was preaching, have you you been marked? Oh, I know. I, I, I know the mark of the beast is coming. I know that. But I'm saying we got folks that mark before he ever gets here. I hope he doesn't put his mark on you. I hope that you'd say in righteousness, I want to live for God.